Hi, my name is Do Not Even Try from the channel Nomad Prod. Today I wanted to talk about a subject that is widely known to be one of the most controversial subject of the entire history of World War II. A name, the M4 Sherman. That's why I prefer the English Tigers for prefer! First of all, I wanted to talk about all the myths surrounding that mysterious tank. Myth number one, the M4 Sherman can easily catch fire for no specific reason. This argument? Mostly given by those pesky weirboos that everyone knows I love. It's practically never founded, and it's practically never backed up with actual reference or proofs. When talking about this myth, people will often say that the Sherman burned easily because of his ammo placement. But what people don't realize is that the Panther and the Tiger that they all love had the exact same ammo placement as the Sherman. Also, fun fact, the 75 HE from a Sherman can all break the side of the Panther. This myth first spawned because most of the time the Allies found their destroyed Shermans on fire. What they didn't know at the time is that the Germans shot the tank until it catched fire to make it unfixable. So even if the crew had already bailed out and run away, they, the Germans will continue shooting at the tank until it burned. Myth number two, the Sherman was a death trap. The thing about Shermans is that although they have a re reputation of being death tra traps, they weren't. Uh, on average, uh, the Americans found that they lost maybe 0.6 of a person per killed tank. Uh, the survivability rating of this tank was higher than pretty much any other tank on the battlefield per knocked out tank. And part of the reason for it is, once they fixed the loader's hatch issue, which I think I mentioned before, uh, getting out of a Sherman is really, really easy. Uh, bear in mind, this is the small hatch Sherman. So I will try the, oh bugger, the tank is on fire test with a small hat Sherman and well, let's see how I do. Now one last point I'll note before I conduct the test is that there is a minor cheat. In 1943 they started issuing spring kits. Uh, before that the tank to open up the doors you were fighting against a full weight of the hatch. However come 43 somebody decided let's put springs on it make it much easier to open and get out. And this is one of these retrofitted tanks. Of course, off the production lines, they were added as well. So, without further ado, oh bugger, the tank is on fire. <laughs> Try doing that in a T-34 or a Comet. Won't work. Myth number three, the Sherman was bad at anti-tank. This is, in my opinion, not true. First, we gotta look at what the German had the most at the time. Nazi Germany armor was practically exclusively composed of Panzer IV and Panzer III's, two tanks that can be destroyed by the 75 M3 of the Sherman even at long range. The only problem is that the 75 was kind of weak against the most heavy armored tank like the Panther and the Tiger. But even that was not so much of a problem since the Tiger and Panther were so rare. But that was relatively quickly resolved by adding the 17 Panther inside the turret of the Sherman and starting the production of the T23 turret that is larger and that can carry the 76mm M1 high velocity. But can go to easily deal with a Tiger up to a kilometer away, which completely removed any advantage of the said tank. Now let's move on to why. The M4 Sherman is the best tank of the Second World War. Reason number one, production standpoint. Let's first look at what type of war was the Second World War. World War II was basically a war of attrition. To win a war like this, you need to be able to produce a lot of vehicles quickly. This is one of the reasons why the Sherman was so good. If you look at the numbers, in total 50,000 Shermans were produced during the entire length of World War II. Now if you compare, let's say, the Tiger, only 1,500 were produced. Now, if we do the math, we can see that for one Tiger produced, 33 Shermans were made. Which is quite a lot. Reason number two, the Sherman was the most survivable tank of the Second World War. Like said previously, if you look at the numbers, only 0.6 out of 5 crew were killed per tank destroyed which is absolutely nothing compared to the 1.80 out of 4 of the T-34. This is mostly true because of how easy it was to get out of the tank. 
each remember had his own trap to get out of the tank in case the tank was hit. Except for the loader that on early variants didn't have a trap. This problem was soon resolved by adding kits for the crews to make a trap for the loader. And on even later variants they made spring loaded traps that were even easier to open. Reason number 3, the ergonomy. The amount of space that the Sherman had inside made it one of the easiest thing to use during the entire war. So easy in fact that on average, a Sherman could have an accurate shot 20 to 30 seconds faster than a Panther. Reason number 4, the M4 Sherman saw action worldwide. To make it simple, it saw action in the Pacific, on the Eastern Front and on the Western Front. The only other thing that saw action in those theaters was the Matilda. Reason number 5, the Sherman had flaws in design that could easily be fixed even in combat terrain. The prime example will be the loader's hatch. There is also the EZ-8 variant that made the suspension pass from VVSS to HVSS making the tracks wider. And the addition of the 17 pounder for the British and the 76mm M1 for the Americans to deal with heavier German tanks. And my final reason of why I think the M4 Sherman is the best tank of the Second World War will be the amazing reliability and how easy it was to fix. The Sherman is arguably one of the most reliable tank of the Second World War. That can be seen even more if we, let's say, compare it to the Panther that needed its transmission change every approximately 150 kilometers, and that his engine could burst into flames for no specific reason, except for the weight of the tank. In revenge, the Sherman did not need that much maintenance, and was able to roll a lot of time without breaking down, which the crews loved. Also, the Sherman was extremely easy to fix. If we want, for example, to change the transmission because it broke down, it only took approximately 2 hours to do. Compare that to, let's say, again, the Panther, which took approximately a day to change. This is one of many examples of the Sherman being extremely reliable and easily fixable. Of course, I couldn't include everything I wanted to say in this video for the sake of keeping it short. If you want to learn more about my point of the M4 Sherman being the best tank of the war, I gladly invite you to pose right now. In any case, I hope you liked the video and I will see you next time.